As the Chinese prepare to host Olympians from around the world, they're cracking down on protest in Beijing. A handful of demonstrators calling for freedom in Tibet today were quickly rounded up by police officers, and residents of Beijing have also been told to polish their manners. CBS News correspondent Celia Hatton is live in Beijing this morning with more on that. Good morning, Celia. Good morning, Harry. Well, Chinese officials have accused foreign protesters of exhibiting bad manners when they campaign against China on Chinese soil. But the government is also worried about the behavior of its own people that will be on display during the games. Traditional music reigned over this Beijing park until the city's Olympic cheerleaders arrived, determined to teach everyone the proper way to behave when the games begin. Before, if the athletes were not doing well, people would throw things at them and scold them, Coach Zhang Shoujin explains. We taught them not to do that. Officials worry China has a bad rap for bad manners. So after winning the Olympic bid, authorities began revamping Beijing's citizens as well as its skyline. These kids weren't even born when Beijing won the games, but they're subject to the manners campaigns too, <coughs> learning to give up their bus seats to elderly Olympic tourists. All of these lessons are much more than child's play. Beijing authorities say it's vital residents learn to stand in lines and stop spitting in the street. Soho didn't have to put a lot of their own money into this project. Michael Meyer really lives in one of Beijing's that. traditional neighborhoods and has witnessed the government's attempts to create model citizens. So one campaign was about polite words, okay? That in Beijing, when a car is approaching, you shouldn't yell, look out for that car! You should instead say something very polite, like, excuse me, a car is approaching. I want to go to the Great Wall. I want to go to the Great Wall. English has received the biggest push. Beijing's cabbies received free language lessons in hopes that when tourists arrive, the Great Wall will be the only barrier they encounter. Even if all the cab drivers in Beijing haven't become fluent, they've still been subject to a makeover. All of the 100,000 taxi drivers in Beijing have received new uniforms for the Olympics. These individual efforts might seem trivial, but this is China's first time hosting the world, and leaders and locals alike don't want anything to tarnish their pride in China's progress. That's the change here now, is this really feels to people like we matter too, and people are going to come and look at our city. Back at the park, the elderly dancers are teaching the cheerleaders some things of their own, confident that what's made China special all along will shine through. Celia, one of the other concerns is the air quality there. We have the picture from the front of the post today of one of the U.S. cyclists arriving there yesterday with a mask on. We saw earlier at, when the pictures uh, were at dusk, because it's clearly uh, 12 hours later than it is here. What is the air quality like in Beijing these days? The air quality has been tough for the past two days. It really has been quite hazy here. The U.S. Olympic Committee has told us that the face masks that some of the athletes are wearing have been in development for up to two years, and they're designed to deal with the specific chemicals and particles that are in Beijing's air, although each athlete is allowed to decide for themselves whether they want to wear the mask. So you had in Beijing this morning. Thanks so much. You can read our Beijing Daily Dispatches from early show staffers in China covering the Olympic preparations. All you have to do is go to our website, earlyshow.cbsnews.com.